Give peace, <clears throat> give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you. Hear the prayers of your servants and guide us in the way of justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We have for today's Mass, a special for the United States, in the Diocese of the United States, uh, Independence Day. And we will have glory. Let's call to mind our sins and ask the Lord for pardon and strength, for mercy and forgiveness. In the times and ways we're in, us, we are in that declaration, a nation under God. Perhaps we have been lacking in ways where we make this nation God's family. Because that this is what this is all about, a nation under God. In moments of grace where we have not made a relationship to our choice, the moral priority in terms of the qualifications of those who lead us. As again, this is what this is all about. A family under God. And in all instances where God seems to be out, or faith is down, and we do nothing. Because perhaps we think, oh, others can do it, or others will do it. And why is this important? Because as citizens of this nation, we are citizens of heaven and for heaven, our eternal home will be God forever. In our prayers and sins in this regard, we say, I confess the Lord of God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask to the signal of the ever most true. All the ages and saints, and you, my brothers, May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us of our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of God will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of our God. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. 
your Lord and the Most High, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. God, our Father of all nations and ages, we recall the day when our, our country claimed its place among the family of nations. For what has been achieved, we give you thanks. For the work that still remains, we ask your help. And as you have called us from many peoples to be one nation, granted under your providence, our country may share your blessings with all the peoples of the earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever. A reading from the book of the prophet Hosea. Thus says the Lord, I will allure her. I will lead her into the desert and speak to her heart. She shall respond there as in the days of her youth when she came up from the land of Egypt. On that day, says the Lord, she shall call me my husband and never again my Baal. I will espouse you to me forever I will espouse you in right and in justice, in love and in mercy. I will espouse you in fidelity, and you shall know the Lord. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, the Lord is gracious and merciful. Every day I will bless you and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and highly to be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. The Lord is and generation after generation praises your works and proclaims your might. They speak of the splendor of your glorious majesty and tell of your wondrous works. They discourse of the power of your terrible deeds and declare your greatness. They publish the fame of your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your justice. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great of kind and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate towards all his works. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh, hallelujah. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, has destroyed death and, true, and brought life to you, life through the gospel. Hallelujah, oh, The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Hello. 
while Jesus was speaking, an official came forward, knelt down before him and said, My daughter has just died, but come, lay your hand on her and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him, and so did his disciples. A woman suffering hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the tassel of his cloak. She said to herself, If only I can touch his cloak, I shall be cured. Jesus returned around and saw her and said, Courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And from that hour, the woman was cured. When Jesus arrived at the official's house and saw the flute players in the crowd who were making a commotion, he said, Go away, the girl is not dead but sleeping. And they, they ridiculed him. When the crowd was put out, he came and took her by the hand, and the little girl arose. And news of this spread throughout all the land. The Gospel of the Lord. It is good every now and then to ask ourselves, who is God? As it is also good to ask ourselves, who I am. But starting with who is God, why is that important? Because the more we know about the characteristics, the basic characteristics of God, the more we can transform or we can model ourselves, we can make ourselves more and more like the way or the ways of God. And why is that so? Because again, in the good book we call the Holy Scripture or the Word of God, Genesis 1, 27. It's nothing new. It's right there in Genesis, the very first book. In the beginning. What does it say? We are made unto the image and likeness of God. So if we believe in that, that we are made or we have been made, then we might as well know how can I oh, develop or have the traits more and more, the traits of God. And today's first reading tells us, tells us of what, tells us of some of the characteristics of God. 
I will espouse you to me forever. I will espouse you in right and in justice, in love and mercy. I will espouse you in fidelity, and you shall know the Lord. We have in Psalm 46, verse 10, Be still and know, meaning experience. Be still, be quiet, enter into solitude, in prayer, and then you will experience, to know in scripture means to experience, and you will know God. Again, the importance is basic. Because if we do not fashion ourselves to become more and more like unto the image of God, then we will have an image of ourselves, not in ways or in a way wherein the image is not of God. And we know where that goes. Ultimately, this book of Hosea, the prophet Hosea, tells us, come back home to God. We even have that him. Come back to me. We sing that every now and then. Now, what do we have in today's responsorial song? From Psalm 145. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Gracious and merciful. Mercy and forgiveness. Where do all those come from? That God is love. And he says it in 1 John 4 6. God is love. And he who abides. He or she abiding in God abides in them, and God in him or in her. This is even more important today, and God's message is always for all of humanity, for each one of us always in relation to our time. This is even more important in what we already have been hearing. The chaos, the confusion, the darkness of our world. Now what do we have in today's Gospel? The same refrain or motif or theme and who God is. She came, or God, or Jesus came, as we have in the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verse 10. I came that, so that you will have life and have it more abundantly. Two miracles happening here. What's the first one? Well, the context, of course, is as Jesus was talking, an official, an official came forward, kneeling down before him and said, my daughter has just died. And he invited Jesus, come, lay your hand on her and she will live. And Jesus, Followed him. <clears throat> so with the disciples. 
But then in that context of going to this daughter of the official, another one came and look at the fate of this woman. If only I can touch his cloak, I shall be cured. That's a great faith. In fact, Jesus said, Courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And from that hour, that woman was cured. This is the woman suffering hemorrhages for 12 years. This is even before the cure up or the raising of this daughter of the official who died. And of course, after that, this daughter, the official, came back to life. Two miracles in a very, very brief story. This is another dimension of God. The power, the force, the truth of God. Now, where do we go from this? The implication is that, that if this is the kind of God that we believe and we worship, not just performing or doing miracles, but the very essence and the very nature in the goodness of God is love and mercy and forgiveness. And then, when we select people to lead us, the very, very number one priority is morality. It's not an economic program, important as that is or other kinds of program, with the poor or with the poor. They're, they're excellent. They are needed, of course. But the very basic is morals. What is that? What is the core st standard value in that person that I'm going to select? Isn't that true? Especially, as we are celebrating today, in this nation who declares this is a nation under God. It doesn't say a nation under Satan. It's full stop. It's as clear as that. No, this is not a nation under Satan. One nation under God. There was another line, in God we trust. What's that? In God we obey. In God we follow. So, and this is not, not about religion or Catholicism, I'm not talking about that. And it's not about being political or engaging in politics. As there, there's a public written document, many times quoted. Why are we saying that yesterday, God bless America? Because this is a nation under God. So, having said that, we should therefore know who are those people that we should be selecting or choosing? That's plain common sense. But of course, in today's world, <clears throat> what appears to be common is rare, no longer common. That's why I said it's a confused and a chaotic world <clears throat> 
world into a moment <clears throat> because many times we no longer know what is right or right becomes wrong or wrong becomes right. We forget what is common sense. Isn't that true? And it should be true not only for this nation, for everywhere. If they believe in God, in, that's a big condition. Now, Morris, what is that? Standard, that's the Latin word for what is a standard? If that is not the way we select the people who should be leading us, then you know what the result will be. And even before any program can be launched. Why? Or if the mores of that person is gone, then we know where we are going. Now, it's not a question of words. I'm a good practicing Catholic. Huh? Then what? But I killed those lives and the unborn in the wombs of mothers. Oh, and you're a good Catholic? It's a very, very important thing to see this. It's very, very clear. Aside from the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not kill, which we know so very well. Even before that, in Deuteronomy, 30, 19, choose life, not death. Oh, Father and Son, life is only among the issues. See? It becomes confusing because we do not listen to God. We listen to Whoever, including leaders of the church, who are giving us teachings in relation to what is confusing, and accordingly, leaders of the people, God's people. I'm a good Catholic, okay? I killed so many people. And I meet the Pope. You know what I mean. That becomes confusing. I am a good Catholic. Huh? The Pope told me to receive Holy Communion. Huh? You know all this. It's a public knowledge. That's not something secret or gossip. It's breaking news. But then we get more and more confused as we do not come back to the Word of God. As to the question, how, how do I know God? I keep on talking to him. He does not talk. I only get silence. Uh -huh. You get silence. The word of God will be saying this. I don't know, it's not just a hundred times, a thousand times. Let's go back to the word of God. What do we do with the word of God? Well, again, you read the whole book, Father 70 to know, just today's readings. That's not much. First reading, you include the responsorial sum in the gospel. 
And then what do you do? When you, you know it. After reading, you ponder, you reflect. Engage sense of stillness and silence. You close your eyes and what was the word of God saying? I say, Lord, give me light. You pray, you meditate, you contemplate. What is this for? For my life too, or for my human, again, you have heard this many times, so that my human will will be one with the divine will. Especially that the divine will is now offered by Jesus on the 22nd of November, year 1900. That's 122 years ago. Not just to one person. After he taught us the Our Father, is now offered to each and every one of humanity to enrich humanity and for humanity to come back home to God. This is from Jesus. And it is approved by the church, and it's not because I'm saying it. And what is the church in terms of teaching? Timothy 1, 3, 15. The church is the pillar and foundation of truth. The pillar and foundation of truth. And in this family of God, we have, we are guided by God's word. A lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Psalm 190 or 105, verse uh, 190. So again, as we celebrate today's independence, Maybe it's good to have time, or well, it's not, maybe oh, it is import, important and necessary to have time, not only for today, of course, day after day, that we have a few minutes, just a few minutes. I'm not even saying 30 minutes or one hour. Just ponder on the Word of God. And then as you are convinced, because we have faith, and as you believe, because to believe is to obey and to follow, your life, my life, will be more and more transformed unto the image and likeness of God. Now God talks, therefore, to you in and through his words. And how come I hear? Because after hearing, I, I listen and I pray, Lord, Transform me into your ways. Until this happens, there is no transformation, there is no peace in this world. We know that from yesterday's readings, which perhaps we, not, we do not remember anymore, the first sponsorial son, the second in the gospel, wherein at the heart of all of those readings, Without coming back home to God, people will be confused. Without coming back home to God, people will have no direction. Without people coming back home to God, there is no order. And there is no authority except myself, me, myself, and I. And I tell everyone, mind your own business. Because accordingly, this is freedom. Independence, again, today is July 4th, 4th of July. Independence is constituted be by being dependence or interdependence. Especially in relation to God. Then our human values will become even more enriched and full and complete. 
So it's no longer a question of this system or this party or that one. No. The Word of God. That's my, my light. And of course, there are so many other sources, sacraments, and so on. I'm just focusing on the Word of God for us to have order and peace and justice and a sense of direction. Otherwise, if this is not important, then the chaos and the turmoil in the world and in the church and in the home, whether we like it or not, will continue. Please rise. Continue to pray for our Holy Father, for Francis and Cardinals and Bishops, the leaders of the church, successor apostles, and they will truly be more and more people of God. In the holiness of God, leading people not to confusion, but to peace, order, and holiness. As basically we are not just citizens of this world, but citizens of heaven. For this we pray to the Lord. And we pray for peace, especially in troubled areas and troubled lands. We pray for people who are seeking God and perhaps who are lost in the way of seeking God. But people who are discouraged as they continue to be sick and die. We pray for everyone, all those who are persecuted in the faith. Again, all the trials and pains will be and will not bring them discouragement. But faith in the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. For this we pray to the Lord. We pray for the eternal rest of all those who have long gone before us, for the souls in purgatory, especially those who need most of God's mercy. For them we pray to the Lord. And we pray for, we raise to God all our intentions in this holy sacrifice at the Mass. We pray for this nation, for all the blessings, the blessing of order and justice and peace. The blessing that people will realize that they are not just citizens of this world, of this earth, but for God, us, constituted dimension of being a people under God. For this we pray to the Lord. And we pray for the eternal rest of Ray Castellanos Lopez uh, as he celebrates, oh, uh, this person celebrates birthday today. For this intention we pray to the Lord. All these heavenly Father, we ask through Christ our Lord.
We are saying, Lord, the God of all creation. For to you, as we have received the divine love of you, through the divine work of the commands that will become our spiritual friend. Where sisters and brothers of the sacrifice of ours may now become acceptable to God the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Accept, Lord God, these gifts we bring to this order, and having taught us through the wisdom of the gospel, lead us to true justice and lasting peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ, our Lord spoke to us a message of peace and taught us to live as brothers and sisters. His message took form in the vision of our founding fathers as they fashioned a nation where we might live where we might live as one. The, the message lives uh, on in our midst as our task for today and promise for tomorrow. And so with hearts full of love, we join the angels today and every day of our lives to sing your glory as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. <clears throat> and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather people in yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice will be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
in a similar way, Raymond was almost ended. The, he took a chance. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it. Uh, he said a blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Pay this. All of you in green, run for this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of. The mystery of faith, save us. Save us, O Lord, provide for us and resurrection. You have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, to one of resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will us to reconcile. You will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect. Especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her blessed spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious moments, and with all the saints in your constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation with you, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity. A pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Mary our Bishop. The order of our bishops or the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen and graciously to the prayers of this family. Whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. All glory and honor is yours forever in and Amen. At a Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who oppress us against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our name. That by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace, I leave you my peace, I give you your not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant your peace in unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We give over to each one God's name and peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are the Son of God. Lord, 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 Lord,
with you, Lord, is the fountain of light. And in your light, we see light. Let us pray. By showing us in the Eucharist, Lord, a glimpse of the unity and joy. Happy our people in heaven, deepen our unity and intensify our joy, that all who believe in you may work together to build a city of lasting peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with you. Let's bow our heads for this solemn blessing as we celebrate today's part of July. May God the Father who has called us to be one human family fill our hearts with deep longing for peace and harmony. Amen. Amen. May the Son of God who came to share our life and make us children of the one Father enable us to grow in wisdom and grace before God and the human family. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, who is the bond of love between the Father and the Son, unite in love all here present, and may He be the bond of love among you, our nation, and all peoples. Amen. And may the blessing for Almighty God the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down and you will remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, be one in His spirit. Amen.